Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning everyone. Hi, uh, if you guys can hear me, please, can you please type one in the chat? Okay, thank you very much everyone for your kind cooperation. Hi, my name is Aki Nawawi and I'll be your host for the entire four-day webinar starting from today until Friday. So um, just a quick note. This webinar is a cooperation between MPOCC and the Faculty of Plantation and Agrotechnology, UITM, Sabah. So this webinar is in support of the program Keluarga Malaysia, Agro Commodity Week, or My Commodity 2021 by the Ministry of Plantation Industries and Commodities. So the purpose of this program is to appreciate the contribution of the agri-commodity sector to the development of the country, as well as provide the latest information on initiatives, technologies, and innovations in the ministry in the development of the upstream and downstream agri-commodity sector. So for our first, our first webinar today, uh, the, our first speaker of the week is Mr. Simon Silveraj, Senior Manager of Systems Management at MPOCC. He is an MBA holder. He, has, he also has over 20 years of experience in the palm oil plantation sector. He has led numerous projects, amongst them in Congo, Africa for CDC or Colonial Development Corporation and RSPO Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil Compliance Requirements. So, of course, not to mention a very warm welcome to TS Dr. Vidoriati Binti Sumin, uh, Head of Faculty of Plantation and Agrotechnology, UITM Sabah, and also Prof. Madia TS Dr. Henry Joseph, Ketua Pusat Pengajian, Pasca Siswaza. Thank you, uh, and also other lecturers and people from UITM Sabah. So, for today's session, Mr. Simon Savaraj will share with us. Um, Sorry about that. I think there is something. Okay. So, okay. So for today's session, Mr. Simon Selvaraj will be sharing with us what is certification and how MSPO complements the need for global sustainable palm oil demand. So without further ado, I, I would like to invite Mr. Simon Selvaraj to begin with his topic and please hold your questions till the end of the session. So Mr. Simon. Would you please? Um, hi, um, so um, I think Mr. Simon has um, some internet issues, uh, so for the time being, uh, we'll try to fix the problem and, we'll, and then we'll start with the session with Mr. Simon again. Just a second.
Uh, hi, Mr. Simon, can you please try your microphone once again? Hi everyone, so sorry for the delay and some technical difficulties. So, um, how's everyone today? How is everyone today? I hope you guys had your breakfast. Okay, so yeah, um, so for non ITM students, uh, towards the end of the webinar, we will we'll give you a certificate. And for your ITM students, we will give you the certificates um, at the end of the webinar after four days on Friday. So, Mr. Simon, can you test your microphone again? Can you hear me now? Yes, Mr. Simon, I can actually hear you, but you sound a bit far away from the microphone. All right. How about now? Um, if you can be louder, that would be great. Oh, yes. Uh, a bit louder, please, Mr. Simon. I think we, I think we can hear you. I think we can hear your voice. Yeah. Okay. 
Hi everyone, can you uh, type in the chat if you can hear Mr. Simon? Yeah, so yeah, it's not very clear, Mr. Simon. Hello, Mr. Simon, can you try that again? Um, okay, sorry everyone. Uh, so if you guys can hear Mr. Simon, can you please type one in the chat? Okay, type two. Okay, fine. We'll go with two. Let's go with two today. Can we type two in the chat? Okay, so Mr. Simon, the floor is yours. Hi, I'm Mr. Simon. I, I think that uh, some of the attendees are saying that they can't hear your voice. I think it's, very, it's a, bit, a bit unclear. Um, um, so, um, so we'll take a short moment to fix uh, to address the technical difficulties for now. Uh, I'm sorry, everyone.
Hi, okay, so uh, we just have, we just discussed amongst the team. Uh, so Mr. Simon, I think you will uh, replace Mr. Hafiz's um, session on Thursday uh, so, so that we can address the technical issues. So right now, our presentation for today will be from uh, the CEO of MPOCC, Mr. Hafiz. So, and the topic will be exploring the world market, marketability and opportunity of MSPO certification as the sustainable choice for palm oil. Hello everyone, can you hear me? Okay, that's great. Okay. Um, so, okay, to those who have attended earlier, I'm so sorry about the technical glitches. F, as we all know, you know, I think most of you are students and some of you are academicians. Uh, it's uh, normal. Sometimes class are cancelled due to technical uh, difficulties. But I hope uh, things will get better now. Uh, I think I'll just uh, take over from Mr. Simon. Uh, who had uh, some technical, uh, um, unfortunate uh, technical difficulties. But I hope you guys are still uh, energetic and still interested to know more on MSPO, which is the Malaysian Sustainable Palm Oil Scheme for the country. So today, um, the, the, I'm going to approach in a different um, angle, where actually I'll start off with uh, just a little bit of a background, why MSPO is around. And then uh, what MSPO is all about and the potential market for MSPO for you when you are in the market later, hopefully you will be aware of this of sustainable practices by the Malaysian palm oil. And if you are related to it, why should you adopt MSPO as part of your business and, um, and also uh, in your working life to also adopt sustainability practices. So I'll start uh, my screen sharing right now. Give me a moment. I hope you guys can, can you see my presentation? Okay, great. So uh, the Malaysian Sustainable uh, Palm Oil or MSPO, Opportunities of Certified Sustainable Palm Oil Market. So we'll start with the overall picture uh, of uh, our global problem in whatever field you may be, whether it be engineering, economics. Um, this is a, just a global phenomenon where the population is expect, expected to reach 9.7 billion people by 2050. We, but, uh, as forecasted by the UN. And this will definitely put a lot of strain on food production. So uh, if we look at in the context of palm oil, where it is in the oils and fats um, complex, we can see that based on the production versus consumption itself, there is a growing gap since the leading up to 2050 as um, you know, uh, the growth in consumption exceeds the growth in production of uh, oils and fats. So I said the, the need for sustainable product, uh, food production is very, very crucial. As we can see that the gap keeps rising towards going to 2050. And if you look at the global trends for food products, you can see that there is also the same increasing trend, which is very consistent with the global oils and fats uh, trend just now. However, if you look at in 2020 itself, there is an exceedingly uh, uh, a more significant growth in terms of uh, demand where people have more concerns on food access. 
you know, we are concerned that, uh, you know, whether we will have enough food during the pandemic and stuff like that. So this concern has already escalated the forecast that people will, uh, that food security uh, is definitely a main agenda and people will struggle for more food as population will grow. So the question is, uh, where do we get enough, uh, you know, sustainable supply of uh, oils and fats to produce all this food that is required by 2050? Excuse me. Um, just this is the global oils and fats, uh, uh, global palm oil supply and demand table. You can see that even by uh, production by um, 2018 is uh, 2019 is stopped growing, and then uh, it dropped a bit in 2020 due to the pandemic, and it's expected to reach back to 78.5 million tons uh, this year. However, you look at consumption, consumption never drops. It keeps on increasing, except with a slight exception in 2020. But in 2021, it, it, it has expected to grow up to 78.9 million tons uh, in terms of demand. And of course, um, because of uh, as palm oil, as palm oil increases um, its uh, production, um, so the criticism on palm oil. Palm oil supplies to one third of the global supply for oils and fats. So there is always a growing concern of oils and fats. Uh, there's a growing concern on palm oil production where we were heavily criticized by the, uh, especially the European NGOs on you know, uh, deforestation, loss of habitats, um, GHG emissions, and even now social issues. However, um, we have been uh, always how will I say, always work within the framework and the legality of um, different acts, various acts in Malaysia. In fact, it is the most, um, how would I say, um, it is the most, um, it is an industry that has the most act applied to it. Um, and if you look at, uh, I, I just wanted to bring you, your attention to Seaspiracy because I, both of you are students here and, I, and academicians, I believe you have seen this on Netflix. This is the most uh, that we can relate to. You know, you have these friends. I remember at one point, everybody was talking about plastic straws. They created a polemic and a discussion online saying that, you know, plastic straw is good, plastic straw is not good. And then there are even people who are trying to use steel, uh, stainless steel straws and stuff. But in reality, you know, because you don't want like some people get, got their straw, the, the plastic straw stuck up on their nose. So, but in reality, 46% of plastic that, is, that has been polluting the earth or the... Uh, in the sea is actually from discarded fishing nets and most of the remainder is of other fishing gear. I think this has been highlighted. But what I wanted to say is there have been a lot of uh, commotions or a lot of discussion has been focused on plastic straws, uh, whereas the real issue is actually in the fishing industry. Same, same case with palm oil. You know, they are, we, if, despite all the efforts that have been done by the Malaysian palm oil and sustainability, we are still being targeted. I'm gonna, uh, and I, I want you to all, whenever you got an information, don't blindly trust on the first information that you got and do your cross, uh, your cross check with relevant authorities. And how do we avoid this? Uh, it is just another example, make informed decision, read all the labels, learn everything about whatever it is that you read. For instance, you know, in the nutrition facts, you see that, you know, palm oil is also being attacked for not being healthy because of its saturated fat content. But however, do you know that saturated fat is, is take, if taken in moderation, is actually good. You know, they, there's this now keto diet that says, or oh, now if you consume fat, it'll make you uh, healthier or skinnier or whatever it is that, that, that you want to achieve through your body goals. But actually the real culprit comes from trans fat. But did anyone say anything about trans fat? Trans fat has been heavily linked to coronary heart disease. And in fact, it has been made um, you know, uh, mandatory for everyone to put trans fat label on their food labeling. That's how bad it is. Um, so rather than focusing on the wrong fat, you should focus on the right fat. When I say right, it means the, the one that you should avoid. So if you do a quick search on Google, what have you heard about it? It's unhealthy and it does deforestation. Uh, and also it has uh, contributed to GHG emissions. But in reality, like I said, in terms of healthiness, actually it's saturated, but there are other harmful substances, which is the trans fat. 
in terms of de deforestation, we are planting on the least amount of land. I think about 0.2% of the total, agri uh, total global agricultural area. And how are we, def uh, how are we affecting uh, you know, the world uh, through deforestation? And of course, GHG emissions, there are studies that have shown that uh, the oil palm plantation absorbs more CO2 as compared to secondary forests. So be informed. Uh, read all the labels because soon we will hope to see MSPO to be on product label. And what does that mean? MSPO ensures that the palm oil that is being used in that product is sustainable and it adheres to all the sustainable practices and demand uh, and the global sustainability demand. Again, for you to think, uh, I've made this point earlier, but you know, palm oil supply to one third of the global oils and fats, but it's being planted on just 0.46% of land and the global, if you can see that global production in terms of million tonne is 74 million, planted on just 23 million of uh, hectares of land. Whereas if you look at the other uh, crops, it's be, like for instance, soybean, 129 million hectares of land being where it's being planted and only produces about 58 million. And But why are the other all not subjected to? Um, sustainability uh, demand. But that is good in a way because uh, it forces us or it encourages us to be more uh, sustainable and we, where everybody has come online, uh, we come together to produce RSPO, Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil or even ISCC or all the labels that, that they use that is very familiar in the market right now in the interest of ensuring that the Malaysia, that the palm oil, uh, the global palm oil supply is sustainable. So, but today we are going to focus on the Malaysian sustainable palm oil scheme as a sensible solution to sustainable market demand. Um, if we look at uh, the MSPO scheme itself, it, the, the, the principle, the seven principle of MSPO itself in fact, the palm oil industry itself already covers most of the principles by the Sustainable uh, Developmental Goal uh, as proposed by UN. It creates a job with, which eliminates poverty and hunger, provides decent work and economic growth, promotes responsible production, and actively addresses climate change and more. If you just as a cross reference, you can see that the seven principles of uh, MSPO already uh, talk about uh, social responsibility, health, safety and also environment, natural resources, biodiversity, and ecosystem on top of best practices. So the MSPO was uh, introduced in 2013 and made mandatory by January 2020. And it is developed based on domestic laws and regulations and international sustainability requirements following international standards. But it takes uh, into consideration the welfare and the ability of also local smallholders to obtain a sustainable palm oil certification which is now mostly being dominated by only big corporations. So it's a holistic approach uh, for Malaysia itself. We wanted to ensure that any palm oil that comes out of Malaysia uh, sustainability, uh, are sustainably produced. So this is the very concept of MSPO itself. And it is not merely a national certification scheme, but it is a catalyst to transforming the whole industry for, for its sustainability, including the smallholders. So it balances between the needs for sustainable practices and also um, the needs uh, for the, the economic needs of people who are involved in it, especially also the smallholders. So a little bit about MPOCC, uh, the MSPO itself is owned by the Malaysian Palm Oil Certification Council, we, um, where the council is a ministry, is, is one of the council under the Ministry of Plantation Industries and Commodities, where it is incorporated in 2014 and only started its operation by 2016. But more importantly, the whole government and the whole direction of MPOCC and MSPO itself is governed by 13 board of trustees, which are well represented by the government, by the NGOs, um, and also supply chain actors, including academicians. So all aspects of it are being taken into consideration. And let's see how MSPO ensures sustainable palm oil production. If we look at, uh, if we break down to principles, we can see that through principle three, compliance to legal requirement, land use and customary land rights are respected and free prior and informed consent is, is, is already in place. And principle five, uh, even waste and water management is also being considered and identified of high biodiversity value habitats and ERT species. And principle seven, development of new plantings, no planting on land with high biodiversity values. 
area and social and environmental impact assessment must be done before any new planting is being done. So there, it is very stringent and there are a lot of things that needs to be considered before you can just plant all palm in Malaysia uh, and to be MSPO certified. Uh, and MSPO also now also take care of the social aspect of it, where principle four on social responsibility, health, safety, and employment condition uh, ensures that uh, those who wanted to apply for MSPO must do a social impact assessment first. And then we increase the complaint and grievances mechanism in place and commitment to contribute to local sustainable development. On top of, of course, ensuring worker safety and good employment conditions to all the workers and appropriate training to all. And then um, people always ask, what's the difference between MSPO and other voluntary scheme? In short, MSPO ensures that the whole nation um, produces sustainability practice within the legal framework in Malaysia and the needs of Malaysia itself, while voluntary schemes focuses on the needs of those um, mainly big corporations who would trade among each other. So it has also greater opportunity for G2G engagement and a more holistic approach, uh, approach when, uh, enforcement approach to the industry. And this is, of, uh, of course, already being realized by uh, the main industry stakeholders, where local society inclusiveness is also part of uh, you know, the UN sustainability, uh, sustainable development goal, where under the no one left behind concept, we have to ensure that local society is being included. Uh, to take the asset palm oil smallholders generally lack high levels of financial or economic literacy. This means that they are often not part of international sustainable sourcing certification. So MSPO also, for, while the big plantation in Malaysia has already been capable of actually adhering to, the, to all the global sustainability requirements, now we wanted smallholder to be on board to also be part of a sustainable uh, palm oil development. But more importantly, it will also increase their chances of getting more income through good agricultural practices. So all that has been done since 2016 until now, the impact is we already achieved 89.43 uh, uh, planted uh, MSPO certified land area and 98.87% uh, of MSPO certified meals. This shows that in fact, uh, though we've been doing this for quite a while, we haven't even reached 100% because we don't give certification to everybody that's, that's, you know, uh, that applies to it. It goes through a very strict uh, procedures and goes through a third party audit where uh, the, the independent auditors will go to the plantation and, uh, itself and do their audit reports and independently write a report without MPOCC or the government's influence to certify whether that the plantation or the mill is uh, following or adhering to the MSPO principles and criteria before a MSPO certificate is being given. And this has also been recognized by uh, external entities. Um, for instance, I think World Resources Institute found that uh, Malaysia's rate of deforestation has decreased annually and of course, uh, they are, uh, if you look at the second one, the rate of deforestation has fallen year on year for the last five years, largely due to the impact of its national certification scheme, MSPO, as uh, mentioned by CEO of Mighty Earth. And Global Forest Watch says that primary forest loss also declined in Malaysia for the fourth year in a row. I mean, if you look at uh, what they say and the graph that I'm going to show here by Global Forest Watch is... Um, it shows that the primary forest loss is decreasing since 2016 and MSPO certified area is increasing. So I hope you have a clear picture by now on, on why we have MSPO. Just to wrap up, there are criticism on the palm oil industry, though it is the most productive oil and we planted on the least amount of land, but we take that challenge. We want to be better. So we, we introduced Malaysian sustainable palm oil that uh, reflects the sustainable practices in Malaysia from the from Malaysian point of view within the legal frameworks in Malaysia. And we wanted inclusiveness of everybody involved also, which do not uh, leave behind the smallholders. And we give them uh, proper training, proper support to ensure that they are producing uh, sustainable palm oil. Okay, so okay, now we have 88% uh, uh, in the market who have already been certified. So let's look at the market that uh, we can um, 
we can sell this uh, certified sustainable palm oil. But first, let us look at the potential for sustainable palm oil itself. The global sustainable palm oil market is valued approximately at US uh, $16.3 billion in 2019. And it is anticipated to grow to a healthy growth of more than 1% 9, 9 for the forecast by 2026. And if we look at the Malaysian context from the amount of um, uh, forecasted uh, CPO trade we did in 2020, the premium uh, that is available in the market could reach 430 million. And this money can go back to all who are involved in uh, sustainable palm oil practices, especially those who are in need like the smallholders again. So, and according to chain research reaction, chain reaction research, the FMCG could pay for zero deforestation efforts with just 2% of, of price increase in their palm oil based products. So it doesn't cost a lot of money for us to subscribe to sustainable uh, practices. And if you look at the table, we can see that Asia, palm, uh, Asia is actually one of the main uh, consumption of um, nation palm oil, of uh, palm oil. And this is uh, again to show the palm oil consumption and imports. Asia is the highest consumer for palm oil with 6% from total global palm oil production. And Asia imports 60% of uh, palm oil. Uh, mostly is being uh, preferred as a cooking oil as it is affordable and has a de desired property. It is very high at um, like high temp high temperature. You know, we like we Asian we like to fry all our food, most of our food. So uh, it is very favorable in terms of it did not alter the original taste of the food and it is very versatile to be put in any ingredient for for frying, even as a filler, as cream, even in ice cream and biscuits and many other products. There is also a demand other than food in the non-food sector through energy like biodiesel, detergents, and cosmetics. And of course, the first country we look at to when we wanted to do any sustainable practices is of course uh, Japan. We have um, because Japan imported around seven hundred and sixty thousand tons of palm oil in twenty twenty, and they have been consistent for the past five years. And the demand for food manufacturing and oil chemicals is also increasing. And luckily, uh, through, uh, through collaborations of multi-stakeholders, we have managed to get MSPO to be identified as one of the sustainable sources for the, MSP, uh, for the Olympics 2020 and also Summer Paralympics. And since Japan is one of the countries that strive for environmental protection, despite them being one of the most industrious uh, countries in the world, where they strive for carbon neutral, they recycle their things and also eco label. So it is uh, naturally um, good to see Japan as the potential for nation sustainable palm oil. And also um, they, they are now trying to shift their energy mix from uh, relying on nuclear to renewable energy uh, up to 24%, where biomass would play a heavy um, uh, role in providing uh, the renewable energy and their PKS or palm kernel shell has been one of the products that is um, being used. So we in MPCC we have started to introduce uh, MSPO uh, new certificate, uh, biomass uh, certification, uh, where we are now in uh, developing it and hopefully it will be launched by next year. Uh, same case with um, South Korea, driven by strong economic activities. South Korea is the 13th largest carbon emitter. However, the government is so committed, they come up with a new green deal where they wanted to reach net zero carbon target by 2050. They have, um, in doing so, they have, um, you know, target a very ambitious NDC target uh, at the COP26. And also, um, Korea's NDC shows its determination to address to climate change. Uh, Korea has also been importing a lot of palm oil. I think about 400, uh, 500,000 tons of oil, mainly for food and maybe some for energy sector. But they are also starting to import a lot for biomass uh, for energy production in Korea, like pellets and um, PKS and some other products. Uh, China is definitely one of the two big consumers of palm oil. So we cannot neglect China because as one of the biggest palm oil buyers in the world, adoption of certified sustainable palm oil and MSPO 
uh, will bring major changes to the industry. So if you look at the history a bit, so China has been farmed for 8,000 years. There have been a lot of uh, stress on the environment, but the government uh, intervened through a very heavy uh, investment to ensure uh, sustainability projects. Like a, by 2050, more than $350 billion was invested in 16 sustainability programs. Uh, to name a few, the Green for Green program, the Natural Forest Conservation program, and three North uh, Shelter Belt program, which aim to slow and reverse the desertification by planting of 4,500 kilometers of Great Green Wall. And they imported around 6.7 million tons of palm oil in 2020. Uh, though a little bit down from 7.8 million tons in 2019. But you can see that the amount that they consume is very, very big. And they are now moving towards having their own food quality and also potentially sustainability standards. So we in MPCC, we have already collaborated with MPOB again, and we try to engage uh, the government and also the industry there uh, to adopt MSPO. Uh, we have just uh, had our MSPO forum in China, I think last week, and uh, the response has been quite overwhelming where people, they address their interests and also concerns and we have already addressed them. Hopefully in the future, they will of course uh, adopt uh, MSPO in their palm oil procurement. And of course the biggest uh, palm oil importer and serve as a biggest opportunity for MSPO is India where they have the potential to import around 10 million tons of palm oil. So they, they are also well aware of sustainability issues and they have created, established their own standards, which is the Indian palm oil sustainability framework. Uh, again, we have collaborated. We are trying to get uh, people in India to, uh, to accept the MSPO. And uh, the 4.4 million uh, tons of Palm oil imported in 2020 mostly are used in food industry uh, to support the 1.35 billion population. There are other countries in uh, who showed uh, quite a good potential, like Vietnam and Philippines, um, where they imported around 1 million tons of oil, uh, respectively. Um, for instance, but however, there need to be a strong government and industry collaboration like in Vietnam where they have adopted this and successfully transformed uh, the industry uh, to adopt to more sustainable um, practices. West Asia, though they are not, um, they, though they haven't truly adopted sustainability uh, practices, however, I've known few companies that is linked to, a Euro, to European buyers that requires uh, certified sustainable palm oil. You know, countries like Saudi, Oman, Yemen, and UAE, which imports around 100 to uh, 500,000 to 360,000 of oil, of palm oil, uh, serves as a big potential also for the Malaysian uh, sustainable palm oil. So we've talked about the opportunities of uh, certified sustainable palm oil and also Malaysian sustainable palm oil. But what are the challenges in adopting uh, this, um, I would say, new uh, thing in the uh, palm oil industry is business as usual. We know that businesses, um, unless it directly imp impacted their um, profit and uh, loss, um, they will not uh, adopt it positively, you know? And then um, there, there's of course need a mindset shift to actually um, to, to, to convince them to work towards sustainable practices and acceptance. Sorry. Panels up there, basically, they are blocking some part of the video. Excuse me, sorry, come again, Zaki. So I just want to say, 
Yeah, yeah, I did, I did. Well, well, Sorry, uh, there was some again some technical thing, but I hope you guys bear with me for a while, okay? And then um, I was uh, I was telling you business as usual. Um, businesses are not really currently supporting the idea. Um, so uh, it's business as usual until it affects positively or negatively on their earnings. So we need a mindset shift. So uh, we in MPOCC, we have uh, constantly engaged multiple stakeholders uh, to get them the idea on the importance of subscribing to uh, sustainable practices and also adopting to certified sustainable palm oil in their supply chain. And Asia is a, if we are talking about Asia, it mostly not only Asia actually, globally, all commodities are price sensitive. So, however, palm oil has always been looked as the most economical source of oils and fats. You know, by, by imposing uh, sustainability uh, requirements on a commodity that has already have uh, the least margin, so it will, in a way, put burden to some of the uh, businesses who are doing this. And protectionism. Uh, protectionism policies have been the key hindrance. Uh, we can see that there are many countries who started to try to ban palm oil. However, banning palm oil will not be the way for sustainability. Because as mentioned earlier, palm oil is the big uh, is supply one third of the global uh, supply chain of oils and fats. We did we just uh, for uh, we did a, a run of simulation to see. Okay, let's say there are no palm oil being uh, you know sold to, to the world, then most probably Europe will have to clear up France, Luxembourg, and maybe Belgium just to plant some sunflower, sunflower oil to produce the equal amount of oil needed to replace palm oil. So do you think that is sustainable? There is a lot more forest loss. And what about uh, soybean? They will have to deforest more Amazon uh, to, to replace the same amount of uh, palm oil that is being excluded if they decided to ban palm oil. And one of the more, I would say, challenging things on MPOCC is the MSPO is yet to be globally accepted as a scheme, uh, which hinders a little bit of its value as we have put a lot of effort in trying to get the whole industry in Malaysia to be certified. Uh, this is uh, due to lack of buy-in because one, we are new, there are other standards, but at the end of the day, who decides which scheme is good? You know, We are trying to get as many people to adhere to, uh, to, uh, to be convinced by it and trade among themselves uh, on MSPO. So I've almost come to the end of the, uh, my presentation. In conclusion, at the end of the day, I, without trying to put too much information on you, I just wanted you to know that there has to be a balance between sustainability requirement and human need is key. We don't, we don't impose, though we wanted uh, a better earth, that sustainability practice are being adhered. Don't forget that who are we doing this for? We are doing this for the people. And if, if the people couldn't benefit from the sustainability practices, then it, it, it doesn't serve the real purpose of actually trying to get uh, us to be more sustainable, more earth friendly and whatever it is. So, and please remember that growing at a slower pace, this is what I quote from the Department of Economic and Social Affairs, uh, UN, growing at a slower pace, world population is expected to reach 9.7 billion in 2050. Don't, don't forget about that. Slower pace, you know, uh, and it's really 9.7 billion. So how are we going to, how are we going to provide enough food uh, for this big of a population? So let's not talk about banning palm oil anymore. We talk about sustainable palm oil. Palm oil, as palm oil is the most productive source of edible oil, will continue to meet the global demand. And adopting sustainable development in all industries is key to ensure that there will be enough for everyone now and in the future. And now is the time to look for the right partner. And for you, the students, is for you to start to think on, you, you have to have the right mentality on sustainability. It's not only about protecting the environment, but also the people who are involved in uh, the economic activities. So it's hard work, it's very time consuming, it's a lot of moving parts and no one way to approach it, but in the end, it will be worth it. Uh, and then um, why do we, why would you co later consider MSPO or how can you help to promote MSPO and why should you do it? It's because MSPO is fair. It offers affordable certification and market access to all involved in the industry. 
especially those who are really needing it, which is the small farmers. And it is traceable. It can be traced to its source. See, the best thing about MSPO is it has an end-to-end -end traceability system. Later, when we have, we, we even have it until the retail where people can go look at a specific product, uh, they can scan it, and then it will trace all the way back to the plantation where it is, it is where the oil is being produced. Uh, but for now, since there is no uh, retail who adopt it, but in the future, we hope that uh, the, the system is already there, and we hope that this can be realized. And it's a government initiative. It covers the needs of its people and partner countries. And it's very practical where it balances sustainable requirement and realistic implementation. Um, I think uh, this one is more later when you are, when you uh, have started working and how it will affect the businesses is it can build trust on the business. How does it be build trust? It can be traceable. So people can see the whole supply chain that you are you have, that you have a responsible sourcing pol uh, policy. And then of course it's um, transparent. Uh, but more importantly, it also serves as a purpose. You know, if you work for a company that is responsible, that wanted to protect the environment, you have you will have uh, you you feel better. You you are work you are working for a purpose. Uh, and more importantly, you are responsible to the environment. And it's government involvement where um, quality of certified materials are ensured and requires su uh, suppliers to adhere to strict set of requirements that ensure best practices is being adopted. And assuring trade with credible companies. Uh, normally, people would ask whether your company is credible or not, but if you are MSPO certified, it means that you have already adhered to everything that is uh, under the legality frame, legal framework in the Malaysian context. And of course, we strive for a better world. We promote best agricultural practices that ensures the efficiency of land, leading to protection of the environment and lower GHG emissions. And do not forget also the people where we take care of the society and workers' lives are well taken care of. And now we also spe uh, specially emphasizes on ensuring that there are no forced labor and child labor involved in the farm oil industry. It ensures the balance of three P's, which is people, planet, and profit. So I think uh, with that, uh, I've summed up the whole presentation, which I'm supposed to do on Thursday. But I hope it's ben still beneficial for you to know that, one, um, there have been attacks on the Malaysian palm oil industry. It, there are various accusations on it. But however, if you, please find out the truth because uh, all those accusations are mainly um, based on, how would you say, um, misinformation. There are competitiveness where, uh, where the, uh, the palm oil industry has penetrated to one third of the global supply. So it has threatened some of the local oil that is being produced in certain countries, especially in the Western countries. So they want to um, de uh, decrease the value of palm oil by, 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 by all these uh, silly allegations, I would say. And um, please know that the government is not sitting on it. We have our own initiative, which is the MSPO, and we are trying to get everyone involved. And hopefully, uh, it will be get uh, it will get accepted for the benefits of everyone involved in Malaysia. And um, we are finally, when you do something, always always maintain the balance balance between sustainability and the needs of the human. Always remember that in whatever industry that you are in. Don't just focus on the environment. Don't just focus on protecting the, the, the wildlife and everything like that. Also focus on the people because uh, eventually people is also in need. We also need food and we also need to continue to live. Um, so with that closing remark, thank you very much. I hope you have learned uh, something today. And um, if you have questions, please ask me on the Q&A uh, questions. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Hafiz, for the presentation and also for sharing for sharing with us during, uh, regarding MSPO. Um, so I think the, the Q&A session, I think if those who want to ask questions may raise their hands and then I will allow them to talk and maybe they could have a discussion with you. Is that okay, Mr. Hafiz? Sorry, come okay. again? Uh, maybe we'll just uh, ask them to raise their hands if they have any questions to ask. And then yeah, maybe, yeah. yeah, maybe I'll just allow them to talk and maybe they can just straight ask you the question. Of course, of course, please. Okay, yes. So I think uh, uh, Dr. Virirati has a question to ask.
Hello. Hi. Assalamualaikum and um, still in the morning. Yeah. Uh, very good morning to Mr. Hafiz and MTOCC. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And thank you very much uh, to Mr. Hafiz for the very, um, very good information for us and giving us a clear picture of the oil palm industry, um, not only in Malaysia, but also global perspective about this industry lah, because everyone know that um, everyone with the lack of knowledge of this oil palm industry, um, they will assume that oil palm industry is the main contributor of the um, deforestation and sustainability issues. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, um, MPOCC and Mustafis. Okay, my question, okay, is um, actually regarding to the MSPO. Yeah. Uh, what is the um, promotional campaign or implementation done or taken by MPOCC so far to ensure this smallholder company okay, um, to comply um, with MSPO? As you know that um, smallholder, okay, they have these difficulties to comply with the MSPO um, um, apa ni certification lah, to comply with the sustainable practices because um, as we know that when it comes to the financial, right? So some of the smallholder, maybe some of them will reluctant to um, uh, to practice it in their farm and so on. Um, that's all from um, from me. Um, my question um, and thank you very much, Mita, please, for the uh, information. Okay, uh, thank you for the question. Actually, um, actually. Um, Okay, let's. Uh, when we say it's, it is a, if you look at the challenges just now, I said um, unless it affected their profit and loss, they will be a resistance. And for the smallholders, especially, you are right. Uh, it is burdening for them because they have been uh, adopting to the conventional practices. So when we try to introduce to um, to the sustainable practices, of course, through MSPO, we have already uh, the government provided incentives for them. Um, uh to to get certified that's one thing so hopefully now after five years the the idea is and then we categorize them into smallholders um big plantation and meals and so on so the idea is um we want them to transition from conventional method of planting to sustainable method of planting including good agricultural practices where they will keep their records where they will um, record all their inputs purchase and sales so that they can see clearly on um, their profits and loss. Uh, so that, that's adopting to good agri agricultural practices and also incentivizing them through subsidies. That's one. And then once they are on board, now we are 88%, what is the move? What is the next step? That's when we try to get companies to be involved. In fact, at MPOCC, we have already talked to various companies uh, from all over the world um, to try to get people to be on board so that they are aware that there is MSPO on top of ISCC and RSPO and all the other voluntary schemes that has already been dominating the market. We wanted them to know that there is MSPO and a national initiative that uh, focuses not only on the big industry, but also the smallholders. And also, more importantly, it, create, it also assures them because it is a government initiative so that it creates a bigger value, uh, not just in terms of sustainability practice, but also global market acceptance, where we can get, a, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, we miss opportunity, the missed opportunity of $430 million in premium of selling uh, MSPO oil, which could have already been given back to the smallholders and the burden that they have already received by trying to, be, to, to adopt the sustainable practices, as you mentioned earlier, is being paid off. So, uh, the, the main key right now is for us to get the global market acceptance, get people to actually buy uh, MSPO. Uh, no, first is to create the awareness. We want to, to reach as, as many people, corporations, uh, government uh, to know on MSPO because I think there is some lack of uh, information of uh, MSPO internationally, especially among uh, corporations. Uh, to, to adopt MSPO and eventually it, uh, the, the effect will be cascading down back to the smallholders in terms of uh, monetary incentives. Uh, I think, I hope that that should uh, answer the question. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, um, Safis. 
Okay, thank you, Ms. Hafiz. I think we have a question from Dr. Alexis Korom. Um, I think you can read it in the Q&A uh, section, Ms. Hafiz. I can't see it. Uh, the question is, deforestation means more than canopy covers of land that sinks carbon dioxide. It may also mean biodiversity, ecological function for hydrological and wildlife ecosystem. What is the responsibility of oil palm industry in this topic? And how oil palm industry can contribute to sustainable living of human beings and also the environment? <coughs> well, thank you, Doctor. We have uh, many approaches to that. Before, uh, of course, um, Biodiversity is one. That's why through the standards revision that we have introduced, we have first uh, introduced a cutoff date. And secondly, we have, of course, um, uh, we put a criteria where we, there is no new planting on natural forests. That's one, to protect the, the existing forest. Secondly, uh, on the already planted area, um, we are not denying that there are human-animal conflicts. But uh, a lot of uh, efforts has been put by the industry to mitigate the issues. For, for instance, uh, we have um, previously we have Malaysian Palm Oil Wildlife Conservation Fund where we work with Sabah Rescue Unit, where if there are like cases of animals uh, in, uh, that goes into plantation, it is automatically or safely relocated rather than being shot down. And then uh, especially on the pygmy elephant uh, issues. And also Orang Utan, we committed to um, studies uh, on orangutan, we committed to ensure that the conservation areas are being uh, protected and funded. And you know, there are, there are many um, efforts that have been done by the industry to ensure the biodiversity part is uh, protected. And then also on the new standards revision, we have also introduced the HCV uh, assessment concept where the high conservation value areas um, is um, not uh, there, there need to be an assessment so that the HCV areas are not being encroached for alpha plantation. And there are many other things that I think I, I, I couldn't explain uh, everything here, but I think I hope those, um, those efforts is really enough to show that uh, the palm oil industry is really looking into biodiversity, is looking into, of course, GHG emissions, uh, protecting uh, species and everything that is under the sustainability uh, umbrella to ensure that the, the industry uh, will not uh, cause uh, any more um, destruction from, from the various community. I wouldn't say destruction, I would say development from a, uh, all the other industries like timber, rubber, which is very, like I said, which is very much in, in need right now in Malaysia because we need to balance between the need of the people and also the you know available land that we have because if we learn economics, land, labor, <laughs> capital, technology is the is a driving force for economy. So we have land, we have a lot of it, and it is our right to also develop on land to ensure the, the prosperity of our own people. But we are that's doing good. so now in terms of our palm plantation to be good. more sustainable. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hafiz. Is, so, is there any other questions? Would anyone like to ask any more questions? Please don't be shy, don't be afraid. Our CEO doesn't eat people, so you can just ask any question. Oh, okay. Hello. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Good afternoon, Mr. Henry. We can hear you. Yes, yes, uh, I'm Henry. Um, first, uh, I would like to congratulate MPOCC for organizing this um, webinar. Uh, the way I see it is that this is the way to, to build or create ambassadors yeah, among our, our youth, especially those uh, who are involved in this industry, especially like our students yeah, from the Faculty of Plantation and Agrotechnology. Yeah, because as mentioned by Mr. Hafiz just now, this is actually a war, yeah, unnecessarily created by, uh, uh, as you know, yeah. And um, I have one question: Do we actually have uh, our ambassador from other countries, yeah, which is um, consumer to our uh, palm oil? And um, 
uh, that they can actually uh, support us yeah in terms of um, um, saying that palm oil is uh, good it's safe uh, it's being handled sustainably by by Malaysia and other palm oil oil palm industries uh, oil palm growers in the world thank you Mr. Hafiz Thank you, Mr. Henry. In fact, uh, like I said earlier, not only MPOCC, but I'm talking generally in terms of uh, the whole effort by the industry and also from the government agencies. One, we have talked to some of the ambassadors, and in fact, they have, uh, like, I have the opportunity to meet with uh, the British High Commissioner earlier. They've even flew in, uh, you know, uh, labor issues is also part of the palm oil industry. They, they, in fact, they flew in a social uh, uh, expert just to do assessment on the palm oil industry and also other industries in Malaysia on forced labor issue. It means that they, they, they have started to realize that this is not just, uh, that, that there is something behind it where palm oil is especially, especially is being scrutinized. Then secondly, we of course are talk and give brief to any ambassador of the countries that we have already um, uh, visited. Um, in fact, we have also started to train our very own ambassador to, that is being posted outside to be more aware on palm oil and they be the voices of uh, Malaysia when they go uh, in, on their official duties. And then we also bring in the, the members of the European Parliament uh, to come to, to Malaysia to see on the sustainable practices by the industry. Uh, some of them never even see a palm, uh, oil palm tree. So to them, they, it is, sometimes they, are, they, they say this is a tree itself and it, in terms of GHG, it absorbs enough carbon. Uh, they realize that and all the sustainability efforts that we have done, conservation efforts that we have done, uh, as I mentioned earlier uh, from the question of Dr. Uh, uh, Alexius, uh, where uh, they are very impressed. Um, then it, they, they, then they, they, they started to be aware on the things that some, some things are just being riled up by the NGOs, uh, on, uh, sustain, especially when it comes to sustainability issues. But having said that, um, we, we are also um, not saying that we are perfect yet. We are still moving forward. That's why we have standards revision. We will try to improve and we will keep moving forward. But in terms of getting external people to, to, to understand on the palm oil uh, industry itself, uh, we have already uh, talked to ambassadors. We have get our ambassadors to talk to them and we have get their uh, European parliaments to also come and talk to us. So there have been various issues, that are, various uh, efforts that have been done to get external uh, government buy-ins to ensure, uh, to tell them that our plant our industry is um, trying our best to adopt to uh, sustainable uh, productions. Thank you. Message received. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, so thank you everyone and thank you Mr. Hafiz for, the, for answering all the questions. So we will meet again tomorrow at uh, the same time at 11 a.m. and hopefully there will be no more hiccups on, from our side. We apologize for the technical difficulties earlier and do use the same uh, Zoom link that was shared for tomorrow until Friday's webinar session. So that is all from to, for today. So have a great lunch and have a great day everyone. Yeah. Before that, I just wanted to tell you guys, be proud of the Malaysian palm oil industry. This is an industry that has been feeding us. So maybe you can go online. If you see negative campaigns on it, try to fight it with facts. Go to MPOCC website, MPOC website, MPOB website, find some facts and put it to them saying that they are just uh, you know, attacking us uh, without real uh, data or just an allegation. So be proud of the industry and um, you know, protect the industry. Uh, you know, it seems you're on social media and doing all these things, uh, especially the students. Okay, I think with that, uh, I hope you learned a lot today. So uh, be uh, learn a lot, a lot more things tomorrow and the next three days where you can uh, learn, I think, from various aspects of uh, the palm oil industry and especially MSPO and MPOCC. So thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Uh, and sorry for the hiccup earlier, but I hope you learned a lot of things. Thank you. So thank you everyone. So we'll see you again tomorrow at 11 a.m. Bye-bye and assalamu alaikum.